What up, flockers? Right now, I want you guys to imagine the most generic looking parrot you can possibly imagine. Okay, that bird in your head right now is probably and most likely the Scarlet Macaw. If parrots had a mascot, it would definitely be the Scarlet Macaw. I mean, you just look at this striking bird. It is big. It's so cool. It's deep red, vibrant, colorful, a really cool like blue hue and yellow on the wings right here. I mean, this is as tropical of a parrot as you can get. As a kid, myself, when I saw these beautiful macaws, I knew I wanted to get a parrot when I grew up. So the Scarlet Macaw has a special place in my heart. It's really exciting to have a chance to review one of these birds. Now this bird here comes from Omar's Exotic Parrots. They're my absolute favorite exotic bird store here in SoCal. So I definitely recommend you guys check them out as I got a lot of my flock from them, the best store I've ever seen, in terms of letting the parrots out and letting people interact with the birds. So at a young age, parrots know that birds and humans are in a flock together. Now they did not sponsor this video, but they were awesome enough to loan the Scarlet Macaw for me for this review. So with that, I thank you guys very much. Now the thing about the Scarlet Macaw is it is a big bird. I mean, it is a big bird, but it's not just a big bird. It has a huge personality. Macaws are like the prime example of like fun and colorful. They're incredibly intelligent too. I would best describe owning the Scarlet Macaw or really any big macaw for this matter as owning like a big dog. I mean, it's as close as you get to a dog with wings. I mean, they just, they run all over the place. They hug, they cuddle, they can play rough, they'll relax and scritch. They make cute sounds like that, <laughs> right baby? Oh, just listen to that. Right, baby? Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. I love my cause if you can't tell. But on top of that, they're also extremely loyal pets. I mean, macaws are one of the most loyal parrots out there and they will be lifelong friends with you for your entire life. And yes, I'm very serious about this. Scarlet macaws will generally live about 65, 70 years. Uh, some can even live up to 80 years old. I mean, these birds are going to outlive you. And that is very important if you're looking to purchase a Scarlet Macaw. Now I'll explain more in this video, so make sure you watch to the end, but these birds I don't really recommend for beginners. I mean, this is a very big bird, and that's kind of the big toss up about owning a large macaw like this, is this is better for an older, more experienced person. But if you are an older person, you probably don't wanna get a bird that is gonna outlive you and you're gonna to have to figure out how to have that parrot taken care of when you're gone because that's going to happen. Now, another thing about these Scarlet Macaws is they come from Central and South America and there's about like a couple subspecies, maybe more. There's a lot of debate around that where there's just like subtle colorations between the different subspecies. But Scarlet Macaws are often confused with green wing macaws because they're both that vibrant red color but the main difference is, well, they don't really have a green wing, they have more of a yellow wing, and they're like a little bit smaller than a green wing. But the big thing about Scarlet Macaws is there's a lot of debate whether they're endangered or not, and that's just kind of the thing. They're in this process of being an endangered species, largely due to things like deforestation, trapping, and smuggling. So if you do get a Scarlet Macaw, please make sure that they're ethically sourced from a really good breeder, like Omar's. So the big question is, is this parrot gonna be the right parrot for you? And to break this down, we're gonna have our six categories, which are handleability, quietness, talking ability, care, hardiness, and upfront costs. Now, if you guys find this video really valuable, please make sure you hit like and subscribe, as my goal is to one day review every single pair imaginable. And let's go ahead and get on with the video. So first off is going to be handleability. And for handleability, I give the Scarlet Macaw about a two out of five. Now here's the thing. Macaws, overall, they are super affectionate, super loyal, super playful. They're so big, you can rough handle them and you don't have any fear about injuring them. I mean, they're really... You're, you're handling them like a dog. 
at this kind of a scale. They're also incredibly high energy birds. And when you get a high energy bird that's also extremely intelligent and a known escape artist, because they will try to escape your cage and stuff, and you put it in this big body, it's going to be a lot of bird to handle. But compared to other macaws in the macaw family, these parrots, the scarlet macaws, they're a little more picky choosy. They will develop a personality where they like what they like and they hate what they hate. And you're gonna have to work around it. And here's the thing, you're going to know whether this parrot likes or not likes something. Because scarlet macaws tend to be a little more on the nippy and beaky end. If they're really upset at you, they are going to let you know and they are known to bite you if you're really getting pushy with them. So when you're first getting your Scarlet Macaw, you probably are going to expect a lot of bites and from this size of a beak, you are going to expect things like a lot of, you know, skin tearing and some blood and things. And it's, it's going to be a pretty difficult bird to manage in the very beginning. Also, on top of a large beak, they also have really large claws and talons. And these birds are going to scratch you up. And that's just something you're going to have to accept owning such a large bird. I mean, even just handling the Scarlet Macaw here, look at my hand. I mean, I'm already like scratched up over here. I mean, you just look at all this. I have like scratches right there. I'm it's going to eat up your arm and you're just going to have to, you know, live with that because it is a big bird and big birds have big claws. So be careful handling these. But here's the thing about these birds. Once you kind of get the hang of them and they also develop that relationship with you, the scarlet macaws are known to become one person birds, meaning they tend to prefer one person in the household pretty much like the main owner and they are just going to become really affectionate friendly parrots to that one person and they might end up being pretty mean and dippy towards other people in your household so you have to be really careful with these scarlet macaws there are ways obviously to work around that and if everyone in your family works constantly with the scarlet macaw you'll be fine and the scarlet macaw will eventually tolerate everybody in the household and they can end up being like pretty good parrots in your family but you definitely want to keep up with the training to keep them friendly next up on this list is going to be quietness and for quietness i give the scarlet macaw a one i don't think i really need to like explain this but if you're getting a large tropical parrot if you're in an apartment don't even consider it. I mean, this isn't a quiet bird. <laughs> now for a macaw, scarlet macaws aren't gonna be as frequent as some other species of macaw, but again, this big of a bird, it's gonna be incredibly loud. You know, don't get these in like some kind of apartment setting or like a town home where everything's like tightly packed because your entire neighborhood's gonna know you have a parrot. It's a noisy bird. <laughs> It's a one. <laughs> but next up on this list is going to be talking ability. And I've mentioned this a lot of times and noisy birds tend to be the better talkers. And this is the case with the Scarlet Macaw. I give them a talking ability score of four out of five. They are incredibly amazing talkers. These things are chatterboxes are gonna be talking constantly picking up phrases in your household, you can talk to it, have conversations, you'll get into arguments with your macaw. You definitely want to be very careful if you have a dirty mouth around one of these birds because it's going to pick up that dirty mouth. It's going to pick up all kinds of sounds around your home from like car alarms and your computer, uh, you know, little parts of music. Obviously, if you want one of these birds, like you're the type of person who wants a talking parrot. And this, guys, congratulations, this is going to be one of the best talking parrots you can get. It's not a five because there's still way better talkers out there in terms of the clarity. So the macaws, they still definitely have a very macaw uh, sound to their voice box. So it's not going to be the most clear sound, but it's really clear for what it is. This is overall one of the best talking parrots you can possibly get, only beat out by about like... A couple birds at best. Next up on this list is going to be care and for care I give the Scarlet Macaw a score of two out of five. Now 
As far as caring for these birds, it's nothing out of the ordinary. So you're gonna put these birds on your pellet diet to get them a nice balanced nutritious diet, as well as just fresh fruits and veggies on the occasion to vary that diet. And you're also gonna wanna give them a lot of nuts. Uh, these birds definitely need nuts because they do need a little more fat in their diet. So things like walnuts and like large nuts for them to chew on and just it kind of doubles as a toy for them because they're trying to figure out how to eat such a large nut and it's just a good way for them to wear down their beak, use that that big beak of theirs to their full advantage and just to give them a healthy varied diet. But the reason why it's a lot lower on the score is this is a big bird and this is going to apply to just about everything. I mean, just picture a small bird, scale it up, it's gonna scale accordingly. I mean, look at how massive this bird is. I mean, it's literally the size of a dog. I mean, just look at this. The beak, look at the size of the beak. I mean, look, it's literally gonna like cleanly take off a finger. I mean, you, you gotta be careful with these big birds. So as far as food goes, they're gonna be eating a lot of food. It's definitely gonna add up on your upkeep costs. And that's also where we get to the other things about caring for a parrot this large. For one, you're gonna need a really massive cage. You just need to get the biggest cage you can find. The biggest cage they make for parrots. The bigger, the better. They're so big, they have so much energy they need to burn. In the wild, macaws generally fly about 15 miles of distance every single day. And as such, you need the biggest cage you can get, and you need to fill that sucker up with toys. I mean, these birds are gonna be incredibly destructive. These beaks, they can bend like metal bars. So you gotta make sure your cage has really thick barring and you're gonna be going through a lot of wood toys non-stop. And you wanna make sure that you get a lot of toys because you're gonna to have to wear down that beak of theirs. Bird beaks are always gonna keep growing and it can become a big issue if they don't find a way to wear that beak down. And now, the other thing is even if you get a large cage, scarlet macaws are gonna need most of their time outside of their cage. They're so high energy birds, you need to have some setups inside your home. So some people put up like stands around their house. Other people will build their own like jungle gym or you can buy one of those expensive like dead driftwood trees that are just massive. You definitely need to get some things like that because these birds really need a lot of that room to burn off that energy and be entertained, stretch their wings out and do stuff. And as such, I cannot stress more important macaws you really need to bird proof your home because these birds, their escape artists are gonna travel your house. Last thing you want is this bird to be chewing on electric wires that are live and getting hurt this way, jumping and gliding somewhere and like hitting against a countertop with a sharp corner. I mean, these birds, you really gotta be careful. For a parrot, this is as hardy as a parrot as you're gonna get, but again, birds Birds, they're still a lot more sensitive animals. So if you're gonna free flight these birds, I definitely recommend teaching them how to actually fly on command and uh, recall training and then actually flying them outside in a safe environment with other people because there are entire clubs and organizations who will free flight their parrots together because parrots are flock animals. And if you free flight your parrot alone, uh, it probably isn't gonna be a good idea because there's a lot of other dangerous wild birds that will try to take out solo birds like your macaw. And last but not least, these birds, macaws, are incredibly social flock animals. So I definitely strongly recommend that wherever you keep your macaw, it should be in the center of your home where there's a lot of foot traffic and your bird feels one with your entire family. So if you want a good, friendly, tame parrot, make sure you do that. Now next up on this list is gonna be hardiness. And for hardiness, I give the Scarlet Macaw a score of five out of five. This is about as durable of a parrot as you're gonna get. Now again, 
Just to clarify, parrots are not durable animals at all compared to mammals like dogs, cats. But for a parrot, this is as good as you're gonna get. I mean, they're the size of a teacup dog. So things like crushing and stuff, you're not really gonna have to worry about it. And the best part about such a massive bird is you are really gonna be able to rough handle a bird like this. I mean, you will be able to handle a macaw like you handle a dog. Throw it on its belly, tickle it, play with it, give it hugs and kisses. I mean, they are really easy to handle birds and they're really tough. I mean, you're not gonna have any worry about handling your macaw. I'm more concerned about how the parrot's gonna handle you because with such a massive beak, that's gonna be the scary thing. Oh, I know. Now, next up on this list is gonna be the upfront costs. And for upfront costs, these birds have a score of one. Obviously, if you're getting a really big bird, they're going to be really expensive and taking care of these birds are gonna be really expensive. And money is probably the least of your worries. I mean, if you're looking at a big bird, you probably already fully know you're going in with a lot of money. So these macaws here in the US, they're gonna cost you around like $4,500. I mean, they're really expensive and they're also just going up in value and as well as getting the cage set up you're gonna want a really large cage some people even will just build their own indoor aviary which would be like I mean the absolute best thing but I mean most people can't do that so you're gonna be looking around like 500 to a thousand dollars for a good size cage for your macaw and then on top of that you're still gonna need all the stands to put in your home or if you want to go the playground route you, know, you got to build your playground or buy a playground I mean you're going to spend a lot of money on the setup for these birds and then on top of that you're gonna be buying a lot of food and it's gonna be going through it pretty quickly. So definitely you wanna buy your food in bulk, like five pound bags that will last you a while. And those are gonna be costing you, you know, like 40 bucks a pop. And it's gonna add up over time, especially with like adding in fruits and veggies and nuts. It's gonna be an expensive pair. But if you're gonna own one of these absolutely amazing birds, money's the least of your worries and you will completely embrace it. So overall, the final score I get Give the Scarlet Macaw is going to be a 2.5 out of 5. I know, I actually thought it was going to be a little lower, but I mean, it is it is a really fun and amazing bird. And that really compensates for the fact that you're caring for a very large bird. I will definitely say this bird is not for everyone. Please be really, really careful and think a lot about how your life is going to warp around owning such a large bird because this bird is going to be with you your entire life. And that's kind of the whole issue I have with the Scarlet Macaws and just any large bird in general is generally you want to be an older experienced person handling one of these birds. But if you're an older person, you're probably better off getting a rescue, but then it's just gonna be a really incredibly difficult bird to handle. So these birds are better for younger people, but if you are a younger person, you probably won't have the parrot experience you need to handle one of these birds. So it is a very big toss up. You're gonna have to like really plan through and make sure you're financially stable to keep up a bird like this because you're essentially keeping a child and a pretty large child for the rest of your life. Now here's the thing, despite the complexity of owning one of these birds, in my opinion, they are one of the best pet parrots you can get. I mean, you just look at how cuddly they are and they're just incredibly friendly. And once you can work past their personality and their nippiness and learn what they like and they don't like, they are just one of the best pet birds you can possibly get. My dream is to get a macaw myself. So with that guys, make sure you hit like and subscribe if you guys wanna follow me on my journey of reviewing all the parrots in existence. And with that, I'll see you next time.